road again, heading south in the summer sunshine down to one of my favourite waters in the world, the fantastic Lac de Saint Cassien. I don't know how many times I've driven down these roads over the years, but the long journey seems to get easier with time, and the 15 hours or so from home seem to pass quite easily. And at the end of that long journey is the sign that I love to see, the sign that says the next turn off is for Cassian. The lake was looking very good, not too many anglers on, and uh, news was that a few fish had been caught, not so many, a typical story of the, the summer fishing these days. But I was looking forward to the first of my challenges, and that was to catch a Cassian carp. But before we could do any of that, it was time to check into the campsite. get asked where to start fishing on Cassian and I always say the same thing that it's important to find the fish and they could literally be anywhere. We searched around the lake and I uh, went to one of my favourite areas in the North Arm and looked around a few different spots but they just weren't there and so it was a matter of looking and narrowing down the options and eventually we ended up in the South Arm and uh, it was one of the places where I preferred to fish in the winter not so much in the summer but there were fish there so it was where we started and it paid off big time just as we were packing up one evening one of the rods went off and i ended up with this beautiful 38 pound common unfortunately i'd already packed the cameras away but so i could only get a few pictures and not video but it was a fantastic start to the trip and uh, that fish alone made it all worthwhile For the next day, however, we found ourselves back in one of the central areas of the lake where I'd actually done well the year before, so we thought it was worth a look. And uh, yeah, it was good to be back there. As always with Cassian, the depths of the features. I mean, people spend a lot of time here looking for uh, all sorts of different features and and places to, to drop baits but in actual fact with Cassian a lot of the time it's the depths that are the features and so uh, you know I'm not very far out from the bank here but I'm just running parallel which is why it looks like it's leveled out it hasn't actually leveled out it's just that I'm going parallel along the slope um, so if I was to go further out to me right I mean basically it just dropped all the way down to 60, 70, 80 foot, but this one, I only want it in about 18, 19 foot, something like that, maybe 20 foot, about there. Lovely hard bottom, lots of rocks down there. As I drop the bait down to the bottom, the lead, when it hits the bottom, I can feel it's hitting rocks and stone, you know, there's a lot of stony ground down there. Um, it gradually softens out to sort of sand and silt further out but like I say it's the depths more than the feature more than anything else that makes a difference and so 19 foot is the spot that's where I want it right there Wow, we missed the run, absolutely screaming run. Just saw a fish jump out in front of us actually. But it was further out over deep water. We just said, oh, that's too far out. 
and then this one's absolutely blitzed off. It's the shallowest of all the rods, 15 foot this one. All the rest are in about 25, but this has been a good spot before in 15 foot. That swim itself has been a good swim, so that's why we decided to come back in here. Golden Common. Look at the colour of that. That's absolutely gorgeous. Well, this was a lovely, lovely afternoon surprise. I mean, we, we got down about midday and there was a few people on the swims all around here, Ellis Point, Aveyron, Matilda, um, but the spot we wanted to fish uh, was free because basically it's on a cliff face and it's not one of the normal swims, but um, just saw a fish jump over deep water and we said, cool, that's a good sign, but it's not over the baits and then literally one that's just out in 15 foot absolutely tore off and it's it's a gorgeous common, 35 and a half pound and uh, just have a look at the, the colour of this because it's absolutely golden, absolutely beautiful. I mean, what a fish. This is uh, what we love about, about Cassian is these lovely, I mean, you never know what you're going to get, but there's some of these lovely golden commons in here. And, uh, well, what a fish this is. It's absolutely gorgeous. I'm made up with this one. We're only here for a couple more days, probably the last day tomorrow. And then we'll be on our, our travels down to see Mike and Simone in another country altogether. But um, for now, I'm absolutely made up with this one. It's absolutely beautiful. Mm. Brilliant. What you come for? Cassian had been as lovely as it ever was, but it was hard work packing up every evening and going back to the campsite, especially when we felt that the fish were just starting to come on the feed, but of course the guards were always there to make sure we kept to the rules. So we had decisions to make and uh, we decided to have one more day on the lake, back in the same swim again, but all was quiet. It was beautiful there, but it was time to move on and uh, perhaps have a little bit more relaxing fishing. We'd been keeping in close contact with our German friends, Mike and Simone, and they were f fishing across the other side of Italy over in Slovenia and saying how nice it was there. So we decided to cut our losses, pack all the gear up and uh, head on yet another long drive, seven hours across through Italy and into Slovenia and to a lake that I'd never fished before. In fact, I'd never fished in Slovenia before, so it'd be a first for me. But we ended up at the lovely Vagorček Lake and uh, yeah, night fishing was allowed and there weren't many people on and it was full of lovely hungry wild carp. By the time we got to the lake, Mike was already set up and already getting amongst the fish with his son Beat getting in on the action as well. The lake itself was a fantastic example of uh, one of the big reservoirs across Europe, dammed at one end. Um, but of course, not without its problems. Uh, there were several snags 
in the shape of tree stumps that have been left in the, the lake. They've been uh, sawn off at just above root level and the roots become exposed over time, which is a little bit treacherous for uh, anyone's tackle, but of course, all part of the nature of this fishing. But it was nice to get the rods out and uh, start fishing and it wasn't too long before I got amongst the fish. Well, it's not a big one by today's standards, but it is a special little mid-20 because it's my first Slovenian carp. We've come to a lovely wild water up in the mountains, and uh, yes, it's a cracking place. The weather's not quite as hot as it was in France. We left the mid-30s, and it's still hot, but we've got a lovely breeze here, and the fish are feeding. And it's a cracking place with some cracking fish, so there we go. We've made a start. I've got my first one. I'm sure there's going to be plenty more. Well, it's a cracking lake, this. It really is. But it is a little bit blowy today, so I don't know if it's going to disturb the sound a bit, but um, we've had three fish this morning between Mike and myself at a mirror and a common so but there is um, a very steep drop off on this side I started off a little bit further up the lake and it, it shelved off much more sort of shallow um, but there just weren't no fish there so I've moved to here anyway and there is definitely a lot more fish. I've seen them showing here. And if you can see sort of how close I am to the bank there, if you can see that on the sounder, still 25 foot there. And then it, it comes up very sharply. And if I just go in, yeah, that's where it starts coming up. You can see 20, 19, 18. That's where it shows up. So you can see I'm literally only about a rod length from the bank here. So you can see what it's like, it's virtually like a, a cliff, a cliff face here. And the fish are using this um, to basically swim along. They're, they're swimming up and down this, this big wall. Uh, and really where that goes around the corner there, that's sort of the end of the deep water. So this is where the fish seem to be happy. So all I'm doing, I'm using those little sticks literally as my marker, I'm not putting any markers out, there's no point. But I'm using those sticks as my marker and you can see coming back down and that's yeah 25 foot, I'm um, just where it levels off now and I'm not dropping it straight where it levels off, I'm just giving it a few yards just to spread a little bit of bait around where I am but there we go it, it's nice and flat there 25 foot and that's that's about it so any fish patrolling up and down this area should come across a bit of bait. I've been putting a bit of bait out, but there we go. Just show you the rig first. It's a, a size five Fang Uni with a, uh, that's actually a 4G squid hook bait with a 4G squid pop-up um, because I've got that in the 20 mils, but I'm actually baiting up with uh, Scopex squid and Key Cray. There we go, just down there. And it's a little bit soft on the bottom. Just see that, it, you just have to unplug it a little bit. And there's a couple of bits that are a little tiny bit firmer, but to be honest, I don't think it really matters that much. This is, is fine. It's only the lead just plugging in there. That, that's all it's doing, so I don't mind that. And, th and there we go. There the boil is, uh, like I say, it's couple of 4G squids in there but it's mainly Scopex squid and key cray. Uh, initially, well I'm, I'm going to put a, a few kilos out here because uh, initially I put about four or five kilos out just to get the fish moving in around the area and then every time I've had a, a fish I've just topped up just with a few really but as this one's probably going to be out 
for the evening um, I'll put out a bit more bait now spread a little few going back to where that starts to shove up so if the fish are like I say patrolling up and down there they'll come across that Seems like a lot of bait, but it's probably about a kilo and a half, two kilos. There we go. That'll do. And then, you know, that's really for the, the night and through till midday tomorrow. So any further takes on these rods, I'll just come out and it'll just be topping up with a few handfuls. There we go, yeah. So nothing much to it, it's just uh, finding the fish. I found the fish, it took me a couple of days, but I'm on them now. And uh, the action's coming, so good, good stuff. Well, it just about sums my luck up sometimes. <laughs> it's Monday morning, and the whole lake is empty now. There's only us here, it's beautiful. There's one old guy that's turned up the fish. And where does he go? On the other side, right where I've been catching. The little sticks just to the right of where he is, is where my bait is. And he's sat on top of it with three rods. He's got a float rod, a rod out on an alarm, and something else. Typical, isn't it? Whole lake, whole lake's empty, apart from him over there. And the only spot I've been catching from. There's your luck. Once I'd found the fish, the action continued over the next few days. Most of the fish were smaller, but eventually Mike hooked into something that was really big. The fish is nice. All the skates are at the, play, at the right place. Gib mal richtig was. Und einer die den Wasting unter weg. Nehmen wir noch Fotos? Ja, wir brauchen nice carp. I I like the color. It was the biggest fish of the trip so far by a long way, well over 20 kilos. Beautiful fish for sure. And I would love to have shown you it here, but Mike's writing a book for release very soon and uh, he wanted to save all the best parts for that. So it's only fair that I let him save the full view of the fish for his book. But needless to say, there was plenty of celebrations after he caught this one. Hast du auf was gestellt? Guck mal oben. It had really been a fantastic few days on Volkacek Lake, with plenty of action and plenty of fun. But time was running out, we had plans to move on, and it looked like the chance of a big fish for me had gone out the window. But then, with just an hour to go before packing up, it happened. Uh, it's the last morning. We're going to pack up in a minute and head off to another lake. So it's nice to finish with a bit of action. I had one a little while ago on the other rod, a small common. I think there's still going to be a small one as well, but we've had some fun here. We've had some fish, plenty of action. And uh, it's going to be time to move on, maybe try and get a bigger one.
nice common. Yes, <laughs> nice one. That's a beauty to end up with. Well, that was a lovely tough battle, early morning. Last morning of our, not our trip, but just our last morning on this lake, because we're going to be moving on somewhere else in a minute, but it's a lovely way to finish. Just a touch under 40 pound, this one, 39 pound. Beautiful hard fighting common. What an absolutely lovely fish. Carl, well pleased with this one. We have plenty of action here. And uh, it's a nice wild lake, plenty of snags, plenty of tree stumps out there. But um, also plenty of carp like this, loads of them. Lots of small ones, but we've had some crackers along the way too. And uh, yeah, this is a lovely way to finish up. So there we go. Part two of the trip over. I want the part three in a minute, but yeah, great stuff. Well chuffed with this one. <laughs> Cracking common carp. And so it was time to hit the road again, but this time we weren't heading so far, just a couple of hours across country east to a lake that Mike had been telling me about, the huge sprawling Smartinsko Lake, which was reputed to hold some very big fish. And maybe, just maybe, this might be my chance to get my hands on a Slovenian 50, which was my dream for the trip. Well, and this is the final leg of what's been a great tour. Started off on Cassian and uh, went to the lovely Vagor, Vagor Czech, however you say it. Um, but now we're on the much bigger Smartinsko Lake. Uh, it's probably one of the best lakes in Slovenia. It's about 200 acres, I suppose, something like that. Um, but yeah, fantastic place. Qu quite a lot of big fish in here. And uh, yeah, a lovely place to spend a few days and when what's been a great trip. So uh, yeah, hopefully we can finish on a high with a big fish or two, because they are here. So um, I'm fishing down the, the dam end of the lake, just in the day area. Now there are night areas on the lake, but um, they get fished all the time. There's people over there now bivvied up and they book the swims. We thought it'd be a much better idea to actually just fish the days. You can fish from six in the morning till 10 at night. And uh, yeah. I reckon most of the fish are actually in this area of the lake, in the day areas where they're not pressured so much. So, um, yeah, let's hope they are. Let's hope some of the big ones are here and uh, hope we get to see one or two of them. But it's lovely. It's a lovely place. That day and the following evening, we just got our gear ready and put a little bit of bait in the swim further down where we was going to fish all ready for an early start the next morning. It was a lovely first day on the lake and after a slow start I did get my hands on my first Martinsko carp. But they were getting their heads down on the bait and we had a few takes that day. And it was all looking good, but just as the sun was going down, something did pull back a bit harder.
well, it's just about the end of a really nice first day at the Smartinsco. And uh, yeah, it's been good, it's been eventful. We've had six runs, uh, landed five fish. Uh, Mike's had two nice ones, uh, Simone's had a one, and yeah, I've managed a couple myself. I had a little common, and this hard fighting Smartinsco beauty of uh, 35 and a quarter. Came on a little pop up, and uh, I was just about to move it actually, and Mike said, give it 10 minutes more. And sure enough, a few minutes later, off it went, with this beauty on the end. So uh, yeah, just about the end of the first day, gonna get this one back and uh, go back to base, have something to eat, uh, a few drinks, and get ready for tomorrow. But um, yeah, good start, so hopefully a few more to come. Changed one spot to actually a bit closer in. It's a bit of a struggle casting out to the spots. I thought I'd try one a little bit closer because I've seen plenty of fish showing closer. And sure enough, it's, it's gone off a couple of times now this morning. Not big fish, unfortunately. I don't know where the big ones are going to come from. But I'm using Mike's banana, his German banana boat here. So I'm not used to these, but God, what a beautiful place. What a place to be out in a boat playing a fish. Mirror. Nice mirror. Action. Yeah, well, this one too, a nice mirror. So, yeah, we've got some good fish. There we go. A nice one in the net and another one just coming. Oh, well, we broke the run of commons at last. We've had a few fish today, a few fish this morning. Uh, but yeah, this is the best one so far and a, a cracking mirror for a change. Lovely 42 pound scaly Slovenian mirror. Absolutely beautiful fish. And uh, I actually changed my spot um, after a couple of hours fishing. I was fishing at long range, about as far as I could cast really. And uh, I see a lot of fish showing a little bit closer. So yeah, I just dropped one a bit closer and had a small common put it back out and add this one, so yeah, happy days. Um, yeah, it's uh, been an eventful couple of days and yeah, it's loads of big commas, <laughs> which are lovely, but um, yeah, it's great to get a nice mirror, so whew, it's going well. I'm loving this place, really, really nice lake, quite peaceful in the day areas and uh, yeah, loads of fish out there and a few more like this, so uh, yeah, it's all going well, it's great, loving it. Well, I'm a bit slimed up as it goes. It's been a good day. We've had quite a bit of action today. Um, 
we started, well, about eight o'clock, I suppose, this morning, we got the rods out. Um, and ever since then, we've had a, a brief sort of low in the afternoon, but it was a good morning and we've had a good sort of afternoon, just going into evening now. Um, but yeah, yesterday, I had one snowman out and I, I had one pop-up. When I was over in Croatia, the pop-up rigs actually did very well. So I tied this one up, which was a uh, 35 combi link, you know, coated braid combi link boom. So it's a fairly soft boom uh, and a chod link uh, hook section. And the only reason for that, the bottom's quite soft out there. It's quite a soft clay bottom. So I was hoping that that was going to just land and sort of settle, even if the lead was plugged in, it was going to sort of settle on the bottom. And yeah, it wasn't working great to pop up, but I did persevere with it, and in the end, the best one I had yesterday did come on that rig, a 35 pounder, so I thought, well, I'm going to stick with that rig, and today I started off with it on one rod again, um, but it wasn't, you know, the other rod was going, I had a snowman on the other rod, and this one, again, was a bit slow going, so in the end I lost my patience and, uh, you know, took that off, and, you know, so now I'm back with my old faithful, really snowman set up on both rods uh, and again it's it, well it's 25 pound combi link this is uh, with a size 5 fang uni hook 20 mil scopex squid bottom bait and a, a, a little uh, sort of fluoro yellow uh, yeah pop-up again scopex squid so it's yeah basic stuff again and uh, literally all I'm doing is casting it out to the spots uh, and just letting the lead drop. I'm not pulling back. I tried pulling back actually, thinking that the lead was plugging in the soft seal. I thought I'd try pulling it out, and that didn't seem to actually work that well. Um, so all I've been doing is letting it just drop, and it's, you're not getting any sort of firm drops as such. It's just sort of going down, and it sort of you just feel it hit the bottom. Um, but it is doing the job. You know, it's getting the bites. So yeah, I reckon we've had between Mike and me today. Probably, I'm just thinking what we've had. We probably had. 12 bites today I suppose, something like that, uh, and they're all coming on the snowmans, Mike's using snowmans as well, um, so yeah I guess that's what we're going to stick with now, uh, yeah bottom baits, I suppose he's had a couple on bottom baits, I'm just trying to think, but yeah the vast majority are, are coming on snowmans, so it makes sort of sense to stick with those, anyway we've got a few hours left this evening, probably three or four hours left yet, we have to pack up at 10 o'clock so but we're coming into a good time now so I'm, I'm pretty sure we're going to get more action uh, before we have to leave tonight but it's been a good day so you know I've, I've moved my rods in a bit closer I was fishing them quite long thinking that that would be the way forward trying to cast further than what people would normally cast here uh, and in actual facts it, it hasn't paid off most of the fish I saw showing were a little bit closer so I've moved them closer um, and that seems to be working and you know the snowman's working as well so for whatever reasons you know we're getting it together and uh, the action's coming you know I haven't got loads of time here but we've got a few more days so you know we're gonna get more fish and hopefully just one or two big ones but um, it's great I'm really enjoying this trip it's been absolutely fantastic so uh, yeah happy days it's good about, I don't know, 28 pound probably, 25, 28 pound. Yeah, well pleased to be catching these, fourth one today, and uh, there's going to be more, I don't know how many more, but um, we're catching about six, eight, ten a day, something like that, that seems to be about average. Yeah, and it's good stuff, it's good fun. Oh, well, it's really early morning or what should be our last day of fishing. It's my last full day here, but you never know, we might stay on another day. But anyway, the good news is 
we finally managed to get into the swim we really wanted to be in. When we arrived, this is where we wanted to head for. But there were two guys already in here. So anyway, we've been fishing up further up this bank, about 300 metres, and we've caught plenty of fish. But all the time, this is where we wanted to be. Uh, and the guys have finally gone home. So at last we've got in here. And that's why I'm up early. You're allowed to fish from six o'clock so it's it's about five to six now um yeah so i'm gonna get the rods out now and uh make the most of this what could be our last day on the lake um for sure this is a better area for big fish we know that um so yeah oh fingers crossed you know i've got one last chance to get a whacker from here we've had a great time is you know we've had a brilliant time anyway caught plenty of fish but it would be nice to end with a whacker, so I'm going to get them out, and uh, yeah, who knows what might happen. But it's nice to have a, a go in here anyway, a last, last chance. Well, it's getting late. I was thinking my time had run out. But as you can see, Got a fish stripping line here. Feels like a good one. And it's taken a lot of line already. That is still going. I wonder if I need to go in the boat for this one. It's taken a lot of line. I know there's a tree stump out there somewhere, so I've got to be a bit careful. Okay, I'm going to have to go walkies. Oh, yes! <laughs> oh, a nice one. Yes, a nice one. Big common? Yeah, big common. Oh, nice. Oh. Well, change of swim certainly paid off. Oh, I was waiting to get in here for a while, like I said, and uh, first bite and it's a real cracker. The storms have sort of passed over a little bit, so it's a little bit brighter now, but it was a great battle, really was. First one, screaming take, really hard battle, and it's the one I wanted, the one I really wanted. It's a 53 pound common, so that is 50s now from 11 countries. So, I don't know what's going to happen here, but we will try and lift her up. Absolute beast of a fish, eh? When I knew we was coming here, it was me dream to get one of these. And there we go, the dreams come true.
of a beaut. 53 pound of Spartans go. Come on. <laughs> oh, it's very lively. Here we go. That's going to be about it, I think, because he's not going to have it. I can feel him tense him up. But I'm so pleased with that. It's brilliant. So give me a 50. Job done. <laughs> The action continued for me and Mike, and we caught a few nice fish along the way, starting to get through to a few of the Smartinsko mirrors, which seemed quite rare at the start, but there were certainly a few about. But, like all good things, they have to come to an end sometime, so it was just about the end of this trip. For me, uh, it was a few more days for Mike, but we had to leave. We'd stayed on a couple more days extra, and it had been fantastic. No chance. Well, it is the last day today. We've stayed as long as we could, but finally it's come to the end. But, thanks to Mike and Simone, we've had a great time. Oh, yeah, we too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was wonderful. And yeah. we catch so many carps. Loads of carp. Oh. Started off on Cassian and then came up to see Mike at Vorkacek. And then oh. on to uh, Spartinsko. And all the way through we've caught loads of these wild commons. <laughs> you want to go into the <laughs> Yes enough. I come to the other yeah. side. Okay, we swap places. <laughs> yes. Yeah, they're crazy hard fighting fish, but we've had lots lots of these <laughs> lovely <laughs> nice. lovely commons. Yes. But it's been great, isn't it? Okay. Okay. Indeed. Time to put them back and uh, yeah, time to pack up and go home. <laughs> Thank you, Pete. <laughs> and so that was it, the end of another trip, and it was time to hit the road again. And of course, there was the little detail of another thousand mile drive to get back home to West Drayton. Fifteen and a half hours in all behind the wheel. But it had been great fun, and we had caught some great fish along the way with really good friends. So it was a trip to remember, but now it was time to head for home and think about the next trip.